Got the powder coat back. Welcome to Obsessive Cycle Disorder. So for this week's episode, we're going to go ahead and get the rear end of this bike buttoned up. I went ahead and chose to use a side mount license plate bracket, pretty much just to avoid having to run wires up underneath the fender. There just wasn't a good solution for that. So I'm gonna run the wires through the frame, run this side mount license plate bracket. So I went ahead and installed this fender off camera, but I still need to take it back off. I was just excited to see it. First, we have to take this wheel off so we could get to all of the mounting hardware. So I was just not crazy about the way these things look. I don't doubt for a second that they'll be fine for holding the fender, but they just didn't look right. So what I have here is my, this is the fuel hose that originally was on the bike. Rika kit includes a new one of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that off and slip that right over there just to dress it up. Go ahead and take those off. Put a drop of Loctite under each of these nuts and put them back in the right spot and we'll get that fender mounted back on. Now it's time to swap the pulley for the sprocket that is included in the kit. So we have our hub and this thing just slides right in here. This is the factory spacer that came with the bike. This one you reuse. This is, as you're facing the back of the bike, this is the left one. And the kit comes with a new one on the right. So from the factory, these come just a raw steel. So I went ahead and painted it to match the spacer from the Rika kit. And that just pops right in there. Another thing to point out is this brake arm lever. All I did with that was I unbolted it, took it out and rotated it, allow it to reach the cable because this is a couple inches longer than stock. So just got to kick that back a little to get everything to fit. Factory wheel adjustment gets reused and it goes right there. You put the axle through, catch that spacer, okay we got it coming out the other side, you get the new spacer in there. And we need to get that other axle adjuster back in there too. And we have uh, 23 millimeter nuts and oversized washers. And on this side, we put the side mount plate on there too. And 
I'm not gonna go wire this up yet. I'm gonna do all the electrical a little later on. We'll just go ahead and leave those for now, but really liking the way it's looking. Okay, now that we have the back and all buttoned up and finalized, you get started on the front. Still need to add the suspension lowering kit. It'll drop this down two inches exactly. But first we have to take off the, the wheel and then drop the forks out. We need to pull this cinch bolt out of here. Just a 14 millimeter wrench to pull the axle. Keep track of these spacers. I just like to put them right back on the axle the way they came off. Okay, in order to get those fork caps out, we first need to remove these handlebars. We have these little chrome covers over the screws. It's a 23 millimeter socket that takes these out. Take out that spacer that's in there. I already loosened up these signals here, so I could just loosen this lower pinch bolt, and these things should slide right out. And these still have oil on them, so be careful not to spill it as you're taking it out. Before we take this left leg off, we need to take off this caliper here. That's just a 17 millimeter. I have this wire here. I'm just going to use it to get the weight off of that banjo fitting. We're back here at the bench and we're going to get these fork tubes drained out. So just make sure you put your finger over the end to catch that spring from falling out. Rika includes a tool in the kit to prevents the damper rod from spinning while you remove the Allen bolts out of the bottom of the leg. So you just remove the springs and insert the damper rod tool. I use a screwdriver in the end of the tool to prevent the damper rod from spinning while I'm removing the Allen head bolt. So if the copper washer does not come out with the bolt, you need to make sure you find it. Uh, if you miss this, your fork tubes are going to leak. Here I remove the damper rod and remove the spring and then insert the spacer. Replace the spring and slide it in using the damper rod tool to keep it all assembled. Again, you use the damper rod tool with the screwdriver in the end while you retighten that Allen head bolt. And here you can see that the tube is now two inches short. Reinsert the springs and the washer and bring it back to the bike. Now we need to put these back in the triple clamps in order to put the spacers and top caps on here. Now is a good time to make sure that you have a washer sitting in there on top of the spring. Four hundred and forty one cc's of automatic transmission fluid. And another way we could do this is with the fork still off the bike, you just compress the fork down all the way and fill it to the top of the tube and that should be exactly 441 cc's. I chose to do it this way because I didn't want to risk spilling anything as I was installing the forks and I have this nice cup to measure out exactly how much we need. We need to put that spacer back in there and push this fork cap back down. Ok, 
Okay, with the tire all mounted up, it's ready to go back on the bike. And don't forget, um, these spacers are left and right specific. Make sure you get those in the right spots. And we go ahead and put the brake caliper back on. And with that, we complete another episode of Obsessive Cycle Disorder. Make sure you like my video and subscribe to my channel. And we will see you next week. Thanks for watching.